Okay, let's talk about math in real life. That's the whole idea behind uh, learning mathematics is to solve problems and to answer questions. And in this particular video, we're going to take a look at this pretty simple question, but I'd be uh, interested to know how many of you can actually answer this pretty confidently. But here's the deal. We want to put $18,000 down on a house, but uh, we want that to represent 20% uh, down. Okay, so $18,000 is 20% down on what sales price? Okay, so what is the price here of this house? If we put $18,000 down, that represents 20% of the sales price. Now, interesting enough, uh, for those of you out there that are not familiar with um, uh, home mortgages and real estate, I'm not going to turn this into a real estate uh, video, but 20% uh, down is a pretty common goal for buyers to put down and it's quite challenging for a lot of people because it's uh, pretty expensive to put 20 percent down especially in today's uh, housing market but uh, when you put 20 percent down on a home you get to avoid something called pmi that's what we call private mortgage insurance so that's why a lot of people want to put 20 percent or more down on that home so they can avoid paying insurance because if you only put let's say five percent down on a home with some people that's all they can afford you have to pay this thing this monthly uh insurance it could be a, a couple hundred dollars hundred dollars to three hundred dollars whatever the case might be until you reach a point where you have um 20% of the house paid off, okay, more or less. So that's the reason why I used 20% down because it does have real life implications in terms of real estate. So let's say you have $18,000. You're like, okay, I want to, uh, you know, go uh, house shopping and I don't want to pay any PMI. So eight, my $18,000 uh, down would be 20% uh, or my $18,000. If I put that down, would be at least 20% on what sales price. Okay, so that is the question. And if you know how to answer this, I mean, go ahead and break out your calculator. Don't feel bad about using a calculator, but make sure you know, uh, don't guess, okay? Like if you know exactly how to answer this, go ahead and put your answer in the comment section, but I'm going to get in specifically how we can answer this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your math courses. If you're going to be taking any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, uh, teacher certification exam, uh, and a course exam, nursing school entrance exam. You get the idea. There's so many exams out there, and oftentimes there's this pesky little math section on there that you got to do well on so I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool math program. Um, and if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. You can use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you are a math student, you just need to know that you got to be taking your own awesome math notes. This is really such an underestimated um, aspect of learning math. Students are like, yeah, yeah, I'll take whatever notes. No, your notes have to be awesome. The better your notes are, the better your math grades will be. Okay, so let's get into this uh, problem. But uh, um, before I answer this specific question, let's just review basic percent here. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. And uh, let's answer the question, 20% uh, of 150,000 is what? Okay, so if I want to know 20% of 150,000, how do we answer that question? Well, if you recall, what we're going to do is we're going to take our percent and turn it into a decimal. So 20% is 0 0.20 as a decimal. So how did uh, that happen? Well, 20% is the same thing as 20.0%. Notice the decimal point is right there. So when I want to turn a uh, percent into a decimal, all I need to do is to scoot that decimal point over two places to the left. So I got 0 0.20 and I dropped that percent uh, symbol. So 20% is the same thing as 0 0.20. This is the same thing as dividing by 100. Okay, so when you divide by 100, effectively what you're doing 
is moving the decimal point over two places to the left. So that's the first thing you need to do is you got to turn your percent into a decimal. Okay. Now, if I want to know what 20% of, a, of a, a number is, in this case it's 150,000, all I'm going to do after I change that 20% into a decimal is to multiply by that number. Okay, so when I go into my calculator and I go 0 0.20 times 150,000, I get 30,000. In this case, this would represent $30,000. So 20% of 150,000 is $30,000. Okay, and of course, I could uh, write this as a statement 20% of uh, 150,000 is. Uh, $30,000, and you'll see why it's important for us to be able to interpret um, a kind of a, a English sentence, a sentence with words, into a mathematical uh, sentence, a sentence with, uh, or a statement, a mathematical statement with the equ uh, equation symbols and variables, etc. Okay, so uh, that's a quick review on just how to find a percent of a number. Uh, and we're going to need to know how to, uh, we're going to need to understand this in order to solve this problem. So let's get into uh, this problem here. Okay, so we have $18,000 down. We want to put on this uh, house, and that's going to be 20% of what sales price. Now, the best way we can interpret this is to kind of write this in a more formal question. So this would be 20% of what sales price is $18,000. Now, I want to say something here. A lot of you, uh, there's different techniques, there's different ways to teach percent, okay? I'm not going to make any judgment on whether one is better than the other. The bottom line is, however you learn percent, as long as you can successfully do percent problems, you understand what you're doing and you're confidently getting the right answer, then stick with your way of doing things, okay? So this is the question that we need to answer, and there's a, uh, a lot of different ways we could uh, approach this in terms of percent, not maybe all too many different ways, but uh, again, percent is taught in a couple, two, three different kind of uh, approaches, okay? They're all equally good. So however you learn percent in school, as long as you can confidently do this, again, solve the, uh, the problem and put your answer into the comment section. But this is the problem, 20% of what sales price um, is 18,000, all right? So how can we solve this? Well, I love to solve percent problems using basic algebra, okay? Problems like this. So let me go ahead and uh, show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we have 20%. Let's go ahead and, and convert this uh, statement, okay, with words and numbers into an algebraic uh, equation. So 20%, I know I'm going to have to work or change that percent into a decimal. So that's going to be 0.20. So I have 20% of what sales price, okay, of what number, okay? So this sales price represents a number, and in algebra, this is our unknown, okay? So we don't know what this is. 20% of hmm, something, right? Uh, so what, what, how do we represent a number, an unknown number, unknown value in algebra with a variable? So I'm going to let this variable x represent this uh, sales price. Okay, I don't know what it is. I just know that when I take 20% of this number, it's what? Well, it is 18,000. So 20% of what sales price is, now this is um, an awesome word to interpret uh, in mathematics, okay? Or when you have, you have to translate a verbal sentence into a variable sentence, this word is will always be the equal sign, okay? So we're saying 20% of what sales price is, but we're, it's almost like you could insert is equal to, okay? So that's going to be our equal sign. And then, of course, 18,000 is just 18,000, okay? So let's go ahead and just kind of pull this all together. So 20%, I'm going to write that as a decimal. So if I had 20% and I knew the sales price, I would just do what? I would take that 20% and multiply it by the sales price. Let's say that was 100 and forty thousand dollars. I'd go into my calculator and take 0 0.20 and multiply it by that, and then I would get the actual answer. Okay, but I don't know what that is. I don't know what that number is. So I'm going to take that 0 0.20 and multiply it by this this value here, x. So that's why I'm setting this up. 0 0.20 times x. I just know that when I take 20% of this number, 0 0.20 times this x, the answer is going to be equal to eighteen thousand. Okay, so using uh, uh, 
basic algebra to solve percent problems like this is an excellent way, um, you know, an excellent application of setting up basic algebraic equations. Now, again, there's different ways you can approach this, okay, in terms of, of solving this percent problem, but this is the percent problem. So now we have to solve this equation, point uh, 20x is equal to 18,000. So hopefully you know how to solve basic one-step equations. So to solve for x right here, okay, all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.20, okay? So x is going to be equal to 18,000 divided by 0 0.20, and feel free to use your calculator. Your calculator is a tool, okay? As long as you know what to tell your calculator, okay, hey, 18,000 divided by 0 0.20, you get 90,000, okay? So $18,000 is 20%. Let's go ahead and just wrap this up here. So $18,000, okay, is 20% of $90,000, all right? So your list price for your house would be $90,000. Of course, that's not much of a budget, especially in this day and age. It's uh, pretty crazy what's going on with this inflation and in, in, uh, housing uh, costs. But, you know, there probably are still places in the country that you could pick up some home for maybe a certainly a fixer upper for ninety thousand, it might be a, a two bedroom, two bath, or a two one. But there's, I'm sure there's places uh, in the United States that you can buy a house for ninety thousand. Okay, now, you know, for those of you who are, are uh, my age, which in your fifties or older, you can remember way back in the good old days at uh, you know home prices. This was actually <laughs> a lot of money. My parents bought their house in Southern California. Back in 19, I want to say 1985, for like 78,000, and my mother, my mother ended up selling that home for like 370,000. So that's what happens, um, you know, uh, in real estate when decades and decades pass. But anyways, uh, not to go off on a tangent, uh, if we had $18,000 to put down and we didn't want to uh, pay any PMI, we'd have to put down 20%. Uh, Okay, so $18,000 would have to represent 20% of the sales price. So we would have to look at homes at $90,000. So hopefully this was a good little review on, um, you know, basic percent problems and how we use them to solve, you know, real life questions and real life math. Okay, that's what math should be about is, hey, applying it to solve everyday type of problems. So, you know, along the way, we did talk a little bit about mortgage stuff that uh, maybe a lot, some of you out there didn't know about. And if you didn't know about it, that's okay. Maybe you never bought a home um, before, and that's okay as well, okay? All right, but if this video was uh, informational, educational, or some sort of way uh, slightly interesting to you, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. I would be uh, greatly interested in that and very appreciative. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully uh, you'll consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the videos that um, you know I've created and I will create. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.